Now, I want to go deeper into the treatment stuff, but before I do, I think I now want to talk about the other side of this pendulum, right? Yeah. Which is, there's another school of thought in this in this idea of what, what I guess sometimes gets referred to as functional medicine. It's a term I don't actually understand mm -hmm. because I don't know what the alternative is, which might be dysfunctional yeah. medicine. But um, in the in the sort of schools of functional medicine, it does seem that when I talk to individuals of this stripe, very often everybody has hypothyroidism. And um, I'm being a little facetious, but not yep. really. Yep. So, so help me understand that point of view, which is one could listen to what you're saying and, and say, wow, you've really made the case for how we can't miss this diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, we, we should just make sure that every single person doesn't have hypothyroidism, even if they're biochemically normal, mm -hmm. and even if their symptoms are kind of vague and could belong to something else. Mm -hmm. So how do we... How do we make sense of the other side of this? Okay, let now we're talking about diagnosis. It's very important because what's what's true for diagnosis, it's not true for treatment. When we assess the thyroid function, so when you are assessing the thyroid function for in during diagnosis, you you normally we measure TSH and free T4. Again, TSH is extremely sensitive. Free T4 is sensitive, and T3, there's no role in the diagnosis of hypothyroidism because T3 is going to be normal. I can guarantee you that. Uh, T3, unless the patient does not have a thyroid or is an overt case of hypothyroidism, in, in a TSH 10, <clears throat> TSH, T3 is going to be normal because the, the system evolved to defend itself against iron deficiency. So... When, it's ch when the system is challenged, it, it does everything possible to maintain T3 normal. So uh, elevates TSH, free T4 comes down in the beginning of hypothyroid, the T3 is normal. It's the same thing that happens when we deprive someone from iodine. The beginning TSH starts to go up, T4 is go down, T3 is normal. So T3 has no role in that diagnosis of hypothyroidism. 3T4 and TSH do. Now, patients will come with a normal 3T4, a normal TSH, and say, I'm hypothyroid because I feel tired. I have all the symptoms. I looked it up. I have all the symptoms of hypothyroidism. I, I, my body temperature is low. I gain weight. My hair is falling. I'm very tired. My periods are altered. I don't have energy to do anything. These are all symptoms of hypothyroidism. And then you say, well, but your thyroid function, I'm looking here, is perfectly normal. I have secondary hypothyroidism. My TSH doesn't go up. That's what I have. Now, secondary hypothyroidism. Secondary th hypothyroidism. Is when the pituitary the, gland cannot, cannot produce. respond to that, Or the hypothalamus TRH. or the TSH yep. is not working. So, uh, it, 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 it's a real entity, clinical entity, the secondary hypothyroidism, very rare, is not common, it's very rare, less than 1% of the cases of hypothyroidism have, uh, are secondary hypothyroidism. And, but the important thing is the free T4 in these patients must be below normal because otherwise you don't have hypothyroidism. You know, to, to have secondary hypothyroidism, you have hypo, you need to have hypothyroidism, which is the hallmark of hypothyroidism is a free T4 that's below normal with a TSH that doesn't go up. Okay, if you have a low T4 or low free T4 and a, T, a normal TSH, okay, forget about TSH. Probably you do have secondary hypothyroidism. And I would want to do some imaging studies of your pituitary gland or hypothalamus to make sure everything is okay. You don't have a tumor or anything like that. But, but you do have to have a free T4 that's below normal. A patient, but most patients... So sorry, the one distinguishing feature for secondary hypothyroidism, they're going to have a normal TSH, they're going to have normal antibodies, yes. they're going to have symptoms, but they need to have low free T4. That's correct. Absolutely. Because otherwise, your thyroid is working well. If you have a normal free T4, you have a normal thyroid from a functional point of view. Now, how about the symptoms? 
what's the way that we put yeah. on all these symptoms? Do they, they don't they count for anything? Unfortunately, all symptoms of hypothyroidism are not pathognomonic, meaning they're not specific for hypothyroid. They can be caused by anything, by other diseases, by comorbidities, anemia, iron deficiency, uh, obesity. Menopausal syndrome is the number one confounding factor of the, you cannot distinguish menopausal symptoms off from hypothyroidism. It's really so much that, you know, in my clinic, I always ask for TSH and FSH for these kinds of patients because I want to know how is the ovary working because the symptoms are not distinguishable. Many patients measure the temperature. There's a lot of, uh, it's very popular, uh, uh, the functional medicine doctors will recommend measuring temperature in the morning. Uh, it, it is true that patients with hypothyroidism have lower temperature. What's not true is if you have a slightly lower temperature, you don't have, it doesn't mean you have hypothyroidism. So all these clinical indicators, uh, much to the frustration of many patients, are really not relevant when, it, when they compare with TSH and free T4. You really need to rely on TSH and free T4 because studies that relied on, on on those symptoms just show that you cannot distinguish. that They have done double-blinded studies just based on symptoms. You cannot tell who has hypothyroid or who doesn't. All right, let's unpack all of that because there's a lot there. So the last thing you talked about, which we didn't address prior, so I'm glad you brought it up, was the temperature issue. Right. Because, uh, you know, there was even a day when I was trying to wrap my arms around this, where I was having p patients check their temperature in the morning if I was trying to understand yeah. this. So doing axillary yeah. temperatures and all of these things. You're saying that it's true. If you have hypothyroidism, you will very likely have a depressed morning temperature. Absolutely, you will. But the causality runs in one direction. It's not bi-directional. Correct. You can, just because you have a low t body temperature doesn't mean you have low thyroid function. That's exactly right. Okay. You talked about a lot of confounding factors that can present symptoms that look very similar to hypothyroidism. And I guess the most important point here is in blinded analyses of symptom treatment, the association with symptoms by itself is insufficient. That's absolutely and correct. And it's for that reason that we have to rely on the biochemical. Now, this is actually quite different from how we fine tune treatment in hormone therapy, right? In androgen therapy, where, you know, you sort of have to have symptoms to justify it. And you can have actually kind of low levels of testosterone, but if you have no complaints, we wouldn't treat. That's correct. And oftentimes if a person has even medium levels of hormones, but complains of symptoms and you replace and they feel better, you feel like you're doing the good thing. And again, part of, thing, part of that has to do with the, the variability of androgen receptor density and things like mm -hmm. that. So this low free T4 is really, along with the TSH, a big part of the anchoring on this diagnosis with or without antibodies. That's correct. The antibodies are not diagnostic. The antibodies will tell you, yeah, this is probably an autoimmune process that's happening. They're not needed for the diagnosis. Uh -huh.